What up YouTube? Time to make some beef jerky. I'm gonna be using London broil cuts for all of these. It's easy to cut these into strips. I'll show you how I use a meat cutter to do that. I've got everything set up for my marinade right here. It's a very simple marinade. Gonna marinate it overnight. And um, after I cut it up into strips, and then tomorrow we'll start the smoker up and start smoking this beef jerky. Once you've tried it this way, I guarantee you, you're not gonna buy store-bought beef jerky again. Very easy to do. And if you got a smoker, why aren't you smoking your own beef jerky? Give you guys a tip on this. I used to do this with a knife. Doesn't exactly work out great with a knife. It takes a lot of time and it's hard to get consistent thickness. If you have different various sizes, um, they're not all gonna cook the same. So some of your pieces are gonna be done and other pieces aren't gonna be ready yet. So what I use now is I freeze these and then I let them fall for just a little bit, enough to where they're still fairly solid. It makes it easier to slice. Then I use one of these deli meat slicers to cut them all to a nice thin beef jerky thickness. This stuff shrinks down significantly when you smoke it. That's about the thickness that I go with, maybe a quarter of an inch. Um, but you can see using that meat slicer, this all comes out pretty consistent pieces. And these are also, with the one broil, it's nice because with them being long like this, it's really easy to skewer these to get these in the smoker. So, now we're gonna make our marinade. So my marinade is from four pounds of meat. Um, this is about five, but I think we'll be good. Cup of soy sauce. So because I'm doing almost five pounds, do a smidge over on all these measurements. Two cups Worcestershire sauce. Pretty scientific. Teaspoon onion powder. Teaspoon black pepper. Teaspoon salt. So basically one part, one part, one part. Tablespoon paprika. Good mix up. Be a mess. I do this overnight. I found with it starting off frozen, it takes a little while before this actually gets to soft, soft. It's not completely frozen. But you just want to make sure the flavor has time to permeate. Come by and toss it around, mix it up every now and then during the day. Into the fridge. See you tomorrow. So first things first, we gotta pull the beef jerky out of the fridge, put it in a strainer, get rid of all that excess marinade and start letting it dry out and warm up to room temperature. And I'm gonna go out and start the smoker, start getting that prepped. And luckily, it's cold and rainy because it's always the type of day where you want to go out and run your smoker all day. I'm going to get this stuff drained here, get all this extra marinade off, and start getting this stuff up to room temperature. And then I'm going to go out and get my smoker going. Now, luckily, I'm doing this on the vertical smoker, so it does not take as long to get it up to temperature as my, uh, my other smoker. Last time I did this video was on the Brakeman vertical, I think. My first break was vertical before I upgraded, so you guys will get to see the new smoker. The newest smoker. And luckily the sink is clean. And I just use a strainer just like this. You don't have to do this step, but it does make the cook a little bit faster because when you put the meat in the smoker, it's already a little bit drier. 
even at this stage, it already smells really good. That's a simple marinade, but that marinade smells great. I normally do this with charcoal briquettes, but I didn't pick any up. So we're gonna use our good old Royal Oak. Things are all a little bit more work because we're working in the rain, but it is what it is. At the end of this, we still get beef jerky. Still have to do a video review on this guy. But this will be the first time I've made beef jerk in it. Very similar to the original Brinkard Spoker that I did the beef jerky video in, so I'm gonna run it exactly the same. I'm gonna take all these racks out and I might adjust these shells as well. Nice thing about this one versus the brick that I had before, this will allow me to make more beef jerky. Because the other one before I could hang one. And I'm pretty sure I can get one here and then one either here for two strips. Now I am a little concerned on this one because these bottom strips will be close to this firebox. But like I said, trying to run this thing as low and slow because you're not cooking with the smoker. So you're drying out and curing the meat with the smoker. So it's really about the smoke. We're not gonna be putting any water in the water pan. No point in trying to dry the meat out while adding moisture to the smoke chamber. side vent completely close. Well, not, I mean, not completely close, there's still like a little sliver there. And that's just a remote temperature gauge. <clears throat> Makes it a little bit easier for me to keep an eye on the temperature without having to come out here every time. I'm gonna let this thing kind of try and stabilize. With it being 40 degrees out here, I might have to put more charcoal in there than I normally work with. But as of now, we're just gonna start letting that thing stabilize and get up to temperature. So I use these metal skewers to hang the meat from. Smoker's uh, 153. So, and Sophie's playing her playpen. That's my assistant. Yeah, she likes beef jerky too. <clears throat> so this is the tedious part of this process, but I will tell you it is a lot easier with this London broil with these nice strips. Some people watching this video right now are thinking, I'm gonna buy a meat slicer. I bought that meat slicer for this specifically. Don't tell my wife that. We use it for making, uh, using cooking roasts and making lunch meat, corned beef sandwiches, all kinds of stuff now. Just a French benefit to be able to make smoked beef jerky. So much easier. You can load these up. I think in my first video, I'll, you know, I mentioned not to overload them too much. I've grown since then. And I've noticed that these start to shrink so rapidly that they're gonna get good smoke as long as there's, as long as there's space there. You don't need to nuke putting these things on there is what I'm saying. Let's get these bad boys out on the smoker. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Now here's the tricky part about this is that for the, t the airflow that we need in the temp range that we're shooting for, it's very tricky not to get a ton of white smoke. And you don't want the, uh, you don't want that. And I'm gonna try and be very careful here because these skewers just barely. In fact, I will be purchasing new skewers 
to play it safe. Looks like we measured that just about right, too, to be able to hang two racks. Four pounds about max, it looks like, which is a shame, because you guys are gonna see when this finishes out. It takes about one Ziploc bag of beef jerky between me, my wife, and my cat, who loves smoked beef jerky. We can go through this stuff. And now we wait, monitor our temperature, keep adding wood as needed, keep adding charcoal as needed just to keep the smoke going, keeping the temperature right around 150. I'll bring it up towards the end just as a safety thing to make sure that the, all the bacteria and everything like that is dead. Uh, but right now it's just a slow, long process of monitoring the fire, throwing in more wood as needed, throwing in more charcoal as needed. This is how we make beef jerky. Three and a half hours into the cook. So bring on, bring it on in here. So this is what we're going for. It's gonna start getting uh, this darker color here. This is just a little bit flat, le left of the fat rendering off of these guys. But we are getting close here. This piece, you know, this is the, what you're getting away from. This, it still feels like cooked meat. You want it, we want it more like this where it starts to feel like beef jerky. So we've been doing pretty good at holding temperature 150 in mild smoke um, now. This is what the fire looks like. This is key. When you're doing this smoke, this uh, smoking, this low and slow, you're building a really small fire. That's all you're doing. Putting these pieces in, I use a pair of tongs, but you're literally laying the charcoal in there because you're not even filling up the basket. Vents are almost completely closed. Now, I will tell you, you see my breath? Yeah, it's 40 degrees out here. This whole, this whole process is more difficult to keep the temperature down when you're doing this during the regular summer. I, mean, you know, I live in Virginia Beach when it's 85, 90 degrees out here and you're trying to keep a smoker down to 150, it's actually more difficult to keep the temperature down than it is, uh, you know, a normal cook. So despite it being chilly and rainy, this is actually a pretty good day to smoke beef jerky because it's easy to keep, keep the temperature low. Oh, we are getting there. Oops, see, close one. Get myself a sample. Yeah, that's good. Not adding any more smoke. I'm just gonna keep this tiny little fire going. See what I mean by tiny? Tiny little fire going. And I'm just gonna let it keep uh, drying this, this beef jerky out because it is delightful right now. I didn't put on my jacket, so I'm cold. So I'm getting back inside. Now I'm gonna let you know that uh, if I do this again, I'm not gonna use the lump or lump charcoal. Stick with the briquettes. They are a lot less work because they burn slower but they burn at a lower temperature. So all these trips I have to keep making out here to put more lump charcoal on, these are not, there's a lot less of these whenever you're using briquettes because they just burn more consistently. They burn on a lower temperature and they do burn slower. All right, boys and girls, my beef jerky is done. So this cook took six hours. Seems like a lot until you shrink it down, suck all the moisture out of it. And you're like, where'd all my beef jerky go? This is it. They just bag it up. The great thing about making your own beef jerky is you can cook it exactly the way you want it. Flavor it however you want it. More or less smoke, you can make it spicy. It's all up to you. I keep my basic, you've seen the marinade, and I cook it till it's uh, chewy, not completely dry.